Watts here from High Flying Physics, uh, supporting students getting top grades at A-level physics. We're going to have a look at a projectiles question today. I tutor quite a few students uh, and have done over the years and one of the first things, particularly when they're in year 12, the first things they ask me is help in, uh, in projectile questions. So let's have a look at this basic uh, projectile question and in subsequent videos we'll look at a few more challenging ones. Okay, so we've got a missile that's launched with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal. And you've got to calculate the maximum height reached, the time to reach the maximum height, and hence the total time of flight, and the range of the missile, i.e. the total horizontal distance traveled. Classic question comes up very commonly. So drawing the, the diagram, of the situation so there's our missile there's our uh, there's our launch of 20 meters per second at 40 degrees to the horizontal and there's the path it's taking there is the um the vertical maximum vertical uh, displacement or the height maximum height reached of our missile and there is our range which is the horizontal distance so the very first thing we have to do is split the initial velocity into the vertical and horizontal components. First thing then is to remember that the vertical and horizontal velocities are completely independent of one another. I repeat, the vertical and the horizontal velocities are completely independent of one another. Um, there's our vertical component of our the initial velocity and the the length of that uh, vector is the same obviously as the as the length of that side of the rectangle which is opposite the 40 degree angle and because it's opposite the angle we use a uh, sign so we say uv is 20 which is the um, the velocity of the uh, of the projectile uh, times sine 40, which is 12.9 meters per second. And then we have to work out the horizontal component. Well, there it is along the bottom there. That's the side which is next to or adjacent to the 40 degrees. So in which case we use the cos. So the initial horizontal velocity is 20 cos 40, which comes out to be 15.3 meters per second. So hopefully that's all straightforward. So first part of the question then is to calculate the maximum height reached by the missile. So we are going to consider the missile's vertical motion only. Remember, the vertical and the horizontal motion can be considered completely independently of one another. So taking the vertical motion only, we have just worked out that the vertical component of the, of the initial velocity is 12 point nine meters per second um, we also know that when the missile reaches its maximum height the vertical velocity is equal to zero now the next thing we have to do and this is where quite a few students forget forget to do this is to take the upwards direction to be positive now you don't have to take the upwards direction to be positive it, you know you can take the downwards direction to be positive but either way once you once you've decided which is positive you've got to stick to it and all the all the motion which is going upwards must must be positive and all the motion coming downwards must be negative so this is the data we've got so we've got the initial velocity vertical velocity is 12.9 meters per second the final vertical velocity at the maximum height is naught. We know that the acceleration, which is acting vertically, is equal to minus 9.81. And remember the minus sign because the acceleration due to gravity is acting downwards. Upwards is positive. And what we've got to find is the maximum uh, vertical displacement or the maximum height. So we choose a, an equation of motion which has got uh, those quantities in it and I'm going to choose v squared is, is equal to u squared plus 2as. Substitute the numbers in and uh, remembering, note the minus 9.81. Again, as I've said before, that is where most of the students go wrong in this, in this type of question. Um, 
reorganizing that to get the uh, SV, which is the maximum height, and that comes out to be 8.48 meters. Okay, part B of the question then is calculate the time to reach the maximum height. Okay, so we're going to continue considering the missile's vertical motion only. So we've got our initial vertical motion is the 12.9 meters per second. And again, we're taking upwards to be positive. Um, again, at maximum height, we know V is equal to naught. Again, acceleration is minus 9.81. And we've just worked out that the maximum height is 8.48 meters. And what we've got to do is now find the time to reach its maximum height. We could use any one of two or three equations of motion here. I'm going to use um, this one, V is equal to U plus AT. And substitute, substituting the numbers in, again, remembering the minus 9.81, don't forget that. Um, and reorganizing for T, that comes out to be 1.31 meters per second. Okay, so that's answered the question for part B. Whilst we're here, for the next part of the question, what we're, in, what we're going to be interested in is trying to find out the total time of flight. Well, if we know the time to reach the maximum height is 1.31, hopefully you can see that the total time of flight is going to be twice that. So the total time of flight is going to be 2 times 1.31, which is 2.62 seconds. And we're going to come back to that when we do part C of the question. Part C is calculate the range of the missile. So this is step three. Now we are going to consider the missile's horizontal motion. Now the horizontal motion, as we've said about three times so far, the horizontal motion is completely independent of the vertical motion. So there's our range that we're trying to calculate. It's basically horizontal distance. And we know there is the, um, uh, the horizontal initial velocity, which is 20 cos 40, which we've already worked out to be 15.3 meters per second. Now, the first thing to say, ignoring the effects of air resistance, the horizontal velocity is constant. The horizontal velocity is constant. What does that mean? Well, it means there is no acceleration. So there is no need to use the equations of motion. This is the number one thing that students get wrong. So the data we've got is a horizontal velocity is 15.3 meters per second. The time, the total time of our flight, as we, we saw in the previous uh, question, is 2.62 seconds. And we've got to work out the range. And we can simply use speed is equal to distance divided by time because the thing isn't accelerating. Horizontally, our missile isn't accelerating or decelerating, ignoring the effects of air resistance. So we can, as I've already said, we can simply use speed as distance divided by time. We know the speed is 15.3 meters per second, and we know the time is 6.2, therefore we can rearrange for range, which is for 40.1 meters. Okay, um, three very common uh, errors in that, in that question, where quite a few students get wrong. The first one is you must consider the horizontal and vertical motion separately. Okay, the, those two things are completely independent of one another. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I think, I think you guessed it, is you choose a direction to be positive. It doesn't matter whether the upward direction is positive or the downward direction is positive. It doesn't matter. Choose which is, which is positive and stick to it. And the third thing is remembering that horizontal velocity is a constant. So when you're considering horizontal motion, Ignoring the effects of air resistance, there is no acceleration or deceleration. So you don't need to use the, the equations of motion, uh, which have got acceleration in it. You can simply use speed is equal to distance divided by time. So there are my handy hints for how you go about solving 
those projectile type questions. I hope that's been useful and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.